Hey guys, so today I want to just quickly talk about differences between ventilation and respiration. This is something that a lot of people who take exams, people come up to me wondering what the differences is in an easy sort of description so I don't get bogged down with this. So let's get into it and let you understand that difference between ventilation and respiration. Think about as if it's like you're driving a car and the engine is actually working, okay? It's the difference between the two, driving and the engine working, right? So number one, ventilation. This is the driving part. Think of ventilation as a process of getting air in and out of the lungs. It's like the inhale, exhale action when you breathe, okay? As an EMS provider, you'll check if the patient's airway is clear and if they're effectively moving air in and out. And it's all about making sure that the airway highway, back to that car reference, is free of traffic jams. Now, respiration, that's the engine part. Respiration is the body's way of using the air it's getting in the ventilation. It happens in the tiny air sacs that are in the lungs, they're called al alveoli, where oxygen and carbon dioxide are traded sort of like Pokemon cards, right? They're traded between the air and the blood. You'll assess this by looking at how fast and well the patient is breathing and using tools like pulse oximetry to see how much oxygen they're getting in their blood. Now, why does this matter? Well, you might have trouble with either one of these types of things in an emergency. The patient might have a respiratory problem or a ventilation problem. and when you have a blocked airway, that's going to mess up the ventilation problem or a lung problem or disease like COPD or asthma can affect the respiration. So when you know the difference between ventilations and respirations, it's going to help you figure out the best way to help the patient. Do you have to clear an airway or do you have to give them oxygen or maybe both? So let's talk about a fourth little tip here which is your EMS toolbox when it comes to this stuff, right? You've got some pretty cool stuff and skills to help you handle these emergencies from making sure that airway is clear and open for ventilating the patient or to give oxygen or even using some tools we have like CPAP for respiratory issues. Now, remember guys, understanding these concepts, it really is key to being a great EMS professional. It's not just about passing an exam, which you're going to, but also helping people when they need it the most. So keep studying and you're gonna be a pro at this stuff in no time.